Done for Newbies back here uh, with another video. So today I just wanted to thank everybody. We continuously are growing the channel. Um, to become a supporter of the channel, please look in the description for uh, the Patreon um, information. This is going to help us get more content to the channel as far as testing stuff or, you know, nice builds and um, obviously getting more stuff to review in the future, like different, um, you know, trigger mechanisms, magazines, holsters, equipment, uh, lights, sites, things of that nature. So again, want to thank everybody for coming to the channel again um, and subscribing for, uh, you know, the future videos. I do have a couple interesting um, ideas coming up to really test out some theories, uh, especially with um, a lot of people really pursuing to, you know, kind of try to convince the general public that things like, you know, gun weight are complete uh, advantage or disadvantage. Um, and I, I think definitely to a degree, the weight of a pistol definitely does help it hit, uh, eat up some of the recoil. Um, but at the same time, I kind of want to test how much and see if it's really worth that. So I have a Spectre comp, um, that you've seen in past videos. I plan to switch that out to a, um, just laser, um, stippled grip module so it's just a black grip module instead of the tungsten infused so the tungsten infused uh weighs 16 and a half ounces uh that is with the um grip weight and magwell and the other one that the laser infused or the laser stippled one just the black one that's just a regular lower uh not tungsten infused that one without grip and without grip weight of magwa i think it weighs like 3.1 ounces or something i got an email specifically from sig giving me the actual specs i'll have to um, go with that um, for the future videos but i wanted to test out that in an upcoming video and see kind of how that stacks out towards a, lo a little bit lighter of a gun so but today in today's video we're going to talk about um really how these two stacked up so this is my m18 uh with the Norso port, so this gun is loaded as you can see. There is a round in the chamber indicator, safety's on, so we're just going to put this guy up. Now, at the time of the video, uh, when I physically shot it, I did not have um, the little bit more aggressive stippling. I physically did um, some larger dragon skills on it, that's why it's not as pretty as this one. And I also wanted to show you, now this is not my first frame that I've ever done. Um, so with that being said, you can physically see, even though I, I'm i decent, I definitely, cutting borders is just a pain in the butt. I mean, it's just very tough for somebody who doesn't do it every day. And as you can see, um, it didn't come out the cleanest, <laughs> long story short. So uh, with that being said, now you can check out uh, my 19X that is stippled by SRB Customs. Um, you can see it has very nice, smooth, and straight lines as opposed to what I was doing. Um, so this one is safe. As you can see, um, just so that way nobody complains about that I didn't safety check it. I, I know what guns I keep loaded. I know what guns I don't keep loaded, but nevertheless, you should always check your guns. It's always a good practice just to check all your guns. But nevertheless, um, you can see um, he did a single undercut here. Um, it's still very nice, smooth. Um, he's got really, really nice uh, borders that lines up exactly to my magwell. He's got really aggressive, aggressive uh, ledges for accelerator cuts, and these really do help with having a vantage point on the pistol to help point the nose down. So if you like what you see here with the stippling and everything, um, there is a coupon code for 7% off uh, your stippling package, whatever you choose, how inexpensive or expensive you choose to go um, i have found that he has some of the better pricing already so make sure you use that code if you're planning to send your gun off to get stippled this is my top modification that i like on all my guns because um, you can kind of get a little bit more used to the uh, amount of recoil your gun has and everything like that but as you shoot longer a really slick grip doesn't help you any and this really helps you make sure that you get consistent grips because you'll notice as you get a little bit of a weaker grip or a different um, kind of angle in your grip um, it will really drastically change your, your, your groups. So I like having a really, really consistent texture when I'm shooting my guns. Um, and stippling is my favorite, uh, modification due to a gun. I think it also gives it just that extra level of, of, uh, you know, just, um, appeal, especially cosmetically, but it also provides a huge benefit in performance for me because I really like the aggressive texture. It helps me. Um, if you were to ask me what would be my top modification, I would choose stippling before I do anything else. 
um, just because it's going to help you handle the gun and manipulate the gun a lot better. And even with more practice and practice, you can get um, better with a gun that isn't compensated or ported. I just enjoy shooting the ported and compensated uh, guns. Um, now, that just is what it is. So what you're going to want to do is kind of, you know, pinch your hands. You know, you're going to want to basically get a really good grip on your gun. And then, you know, what I do is I try to get up as high as I can, kind of try to rotate my uh, webbing of my hand. So that way you can see it kind of ruffles there in the back. Um, just obviously you don't want to make sure you go too high so that way you're getting, you know, some slide bite or whatever. Um, but you want to do that. And then um, I typically will, you know, instead of holding my hands like this, I physically grab these two and I try to push on basically my trigger finger and um, then the rest of my fingers kind of go like this, you know, so that way I'm a little bit higher on the pistol. And then I really try to, um, I don't really push down too hard with my right thumb, but I try to basically palm the whole side of the slide. And then because of that, you'll pr physically push this, uh, keep it in place. So you'll be pushing against it. So sometimes you won't get um, locked back on the slide and that's why. But nevertheless, I have found it more enjoyable and easier to keep my uh, shots quicker. And you know, it, it keeps the, the front of the gun down a little bit more, which I like. So that's why I grip my pistols like that. Um, I've tried a couple of different grips. However, um, that's just what's worked for me the best. And really, it's not really so much as where you place it, place your hands. You just want to figure out what's good for you in terms of mitigating recoil. Now, for me, that's what works because when I get up high, I'm really using a majority of the pressure on the actual, like where, where my finger bends right here, and then also my palm. So I'm really pushing against it. And then with this one, since Glock has its hump, it actually works out pretty well because you don't get a traditional grip on this gun anyways. You kind of have to twist your hand a little bit to have it fit. And then what I'm doing is I'm pressing towards. So I'm going like this. And, um, you know, there's, there's a lot of professional shooters like uh, Rob Bogle who talks about his grip. And he physically, um, sometimes he'll physically come on the front of the trigger guard, which... I run a light on all my guns. I've never done. I mean, granted, he's a million times the shooter I am, but um, it just helps me. Those are the tips that work for me. And I have learned uh, because a lot of people, you know, say like, oh, you just want to have the tip of your finger on the trigger, um, things like that. It's all about really testing what works for you. For me, if I have my hand really far back and I'm trying to do that, I tend to snatch the trigger more. So I physically get in the mag wall and I tip, I, I'm pulling the trigger with the actual uh, crease here in my finger. That's where I pull the trigger. I know that's not what a lot of people tell you what to do. I'll tell you, do what you think is going to work for yourself and uh, mainly just get out there and train. Train with, the, with your guns that you buy. Um, and make sure that you understand how they work. Make sure you know the in, them insides and out. You know how to uh, fix a, a issue that comes up. Um, all those things. Now, um, one thing that really, really ha I think helps this pistol is the fact that you can get a little bit closer of a vantage point up here, as opposed to the SIG having the. Um, you know, I have a gas pedal on there and it helps me, but I've noticed that because it's a little bit farther back, I think this one has a little bit more of an advantage, um, as opposed to this one. Now this one's a couple ounces heavier, so that helps it in a way. Um, but in terms of overall recoil, um, on these two, now you'll notice in the video I'm shooting the Ramjet is on there and that's what I'm physically doing. However, I switched it over to my other pistol and I have that out to get stippled. Um, you know, one thing that really really makes a gun is the texture and technique and then obviously it's capability of the firearm itself so i'm working on getting that black one up and going but and and you know, i keep getting sidetracked but in terms of these two um i found that the 19x with the compensator did shoot flatter it weighs a little bit less so that's a huge bonus
Now it is a little bit longer. I really don't, I really like smaller, better shooting guns. Um, <clears throat> if I was going to compare any, like, I really like how my Spectre Comp shoots like a lot. I really wish the trigger on that was a little bit better, but I love the recoil pattern and the actual, um, you know, the, the feeling that I get of the, um, recoil pattern, I guess. So my Spectre Comp is longer than my Staccato P. However, my Staccato P is quicker. Um, by far it's quicker. Um, it has less recoil, way more accurate, better trigger. I like the grip in it. Um, I, you know, I, I really love everything about the Staccato and I plan to show it some more love coming to the, um, in the future videos. However, um, right now I'm trying to really, you know, these seem to be the most popular, the striker fired, um, guns that you can kind of put a little bit of money into and have some personalization and, and make completely your own, which I really don't blame you. I mean, I enjoy having these guns out more than my Staccato, even though I know the best, um, shooting handgun I have is this, the Staccato. These are still by far more fun to carry, uh, more fun to take to the range and stuff like that. They don't shoot nearly as nice. I would say shooting the Staccato is the best, but I like transporting and showing these guys off just because they're, they're cool guns. I mean, not a lot of people customize their guns and it's just a really, really nice thing to, you know, want to have a couple different ones to get them customized. So that way you're just, you know, maybe, maybe you just like to customize stuff. I know I do. Not everybody does. Um, some people think that like stippling the grip is completely stupid, but I mean, you don't see anybody winning USPSA matches, you know, that doesn't have a uh, granulate texture on their guns or a really nice stipple job or anything like that. I mean, there's, there's literally people winning with P320s that have a really nice, um, granulate job on it or, you know, whatever the case may be. Uh, Terran Tactical has it on all their packages, uh, which I really like the Terran Tactical stuff. Obviously I think their base plates are probably the best, um, base plates are, uh, the level of thickness, the, um, actual coatings they put on them are fantastic. They really hold up. I've had a couple of different, um, name brand stuff, which I won't mention, but it really wears off real quickly. You drop them on the ground one time and they're pretty much screwed. I mean, it scratched all down the side. I've dropped my Terran Tactical, uh, Tactical Magwell, um, you know, about seven, seven feet, uh, from the top to the ground on concrete and barely dings it. I mean, it's just, it's really the next level of quality and that's kind of why they're a little bit more, but it's definitely worth it. Right now, actually, a lot of people are catching up to them in price. So I would just, you know, pick the, um, you know, best thing for you and get you a quality magazine. And they have really, really good quality springs. I've had them in my guns for years. Um, a couple of my magazines I've actually had for, you know, five plus years and I've never had issues with any of them. And uh, they all seem to work uh, reliably, and I really do enjoy them. But and all in all, uh, the Radian Ramjet really did, um, you know, come out on top um, as opposed to this guy. I mean, I tried to stipple it to give it a little bit more texture, help me out with uh, mitigating the recoil more. And even though I enjoy it more, it still doesn't pan out to how nice this one with the Ramjet is. Um, so I'm going to keep working on making this the flattest shooting, um, not this one, but my black one whenever it gets back. So I sent my black one off to SRB Customs to get a very nice stipple job. Uh, so we're going to keep working to get that to be, uh, you know, as flat as possible. Um, so we're looking at probably either going with a, a recoil reduction system in a guide rod or we're going to just flat out go with the tungsten. I do want to keep the weight down. However, um, you know, we're going to see what it fires best with so stay tuned for more videos and uh, remember to like and subscribe